this is The Provoke Prawn, and this is a video to show you how to use Elgato's face cam in an unusual way. And in this video, I'm going to be combining with Elgato's green screen mouse mat to show you how to pull a view of your mouse hand into your stream, whether you're using Streamlabs OBS or standard OBS, you're going to be able to pull your mouse hand in with a chroma key effect so that the desk becomes invisible and all that is visible is your mouse hand and the mouse itself. You'll see a sample of that here in this little shot where I'm demonstrating it with the Logitech G Pro X Super Lite. Now I've recently reviewed the face cam and usually this is meant to be designed for looking at your face and talking to the camera, but in this case I'm going to be demonstrating how to use it with a simple little setup and a slight hack, which is basically using a tripod. So this is a gorilla pod from Joby, which essentially just turns and twists and then grips onto things. And I'm using that on my blue compass boom arm. I'm just hooking it over the boom arm because that boom arm's conveniently placed on my desk on the right hand side over my mouse hand with the mic towards my mouth, which means I can position the camera in such a way that I can get it to point down onto my mouse hand and onto the green screen mouse mat. The green screen mouse mat is obviously an interesting highlight because it is obviously chroma key capable so you can easily add a chroma key into your Streamlabs filters to then get rid of the background so any other sort of mouse mat would appear in the stream you'd have to cut down the edges of it crop the borders and try and make it look nice so it doesn't get in the way but with the mouse mat from Elgato got a nice flat surface with the perfect chroma key material and it's still obviously smooth and slick enough to be able to use as a gaming mouse surface so it's perfect for that and it's reasonably affordable too so this is a brilliant solution if you want to add your mouse into your stream to create a point of interest now if you're a pro player or you think that people might be interested in seeing the flicks of your mouse and how good you are with it and this is obviously a logical thing to do the mouse mat as you'll see is quite large more desk pad size than anything else it's quite a big thing so there's plenty of space on here you can see it with a g915 tkr from logitech and a Razer mouse that I recently reviewed, the Viper Ultimate, just for demonstration purposes. Obviously, you want it on the green side. The backing is really just designed to hold it in place. But what I wanted to demonstrate is the sheer size of a thing and the setup process for using it. Now, this is actually a fairly straightforward system that I'm using because I'm using that Gorilla Pod mounting, attaching it to my boom arm. Obviously, you might not be able to do that, or you might choose to use a different option. The face cam will work with Elgato's multi mount system, which might be preferable, and it will also work with any other tripod setup that you might happen to have because it has a standard thread, so you could use a tripod in a variety of ways. You might even be able to top mount it on top of your monitor and then get it to face down. I did something similar to this with Logitech Streamcam a long time ago, where I captured two different cameras, two different angles, and so it is plausible to do it with any setup. But for the purposes of this video, I'm gonna be using a Logitech mouse, Elgato's green screen mouse mat, and the face cam all in one. Some good lighting is necessary, obviously. So if you have some key lights, that'll help because you need to make sure that the green screen is lit up perfectly. But what I'm gonna do is demonstrate how to go about this setup process and how to get going with this. So first of all, the first step is to give you a view of my desk. So this is how my setup normally looks. Of course, there's a mouse mount on my desk, the boom arm with the microphone on it. You'll see that I've attached the camera facing downwards and I've opened up the camera app on my desktop so I can get a view of what it looks like. And see there's a bit of a wonky angle at this point, but it's actually easy to adjust because you can obviously tweak what you're seeing within OBS. And we'll get to that in a minute. And because it's on a boom arm, I can easily reposition it. And the face cam itself also twists and tilts on that setup as well, because the Joby Gorilla Pod is really flexible. Next step is to get the green screen mouse mat onto the desk. And again, this is dead simple to do. This was taken during the daytime, but I still had some lighting. I think lighting will be a big part of it, but because the green screen isn't taking up the whole sort of space, you might find that you're okay. It really is going to depend on your own lighting. But one thing I found with green screens generally, especially if they're behind you, is you've got to make sure they're flat constantly and they haven't got any creases in them and they're well lit. And the bonus of this mouse mat is it's a good quality. So it sits on the desk really well. And as long as you keep it clean and flat, you shouldn't have a problem with it. Now you can see some better lighting and an angle of what we've got set up. You can see a little bit of the view of what you'd see down here. Obviously my keyboard's slightly in the screen here, but what we're gonna do is move that around a bit. And once we pull it into OBS, we can then tweak the settings and crop it down a bit so you can just see my mouse hand. 
and you'll get the view that you want. So here we are within OBS. I have a clean version of OBS set up here just to make things a bit more straightforward with just one source selected. So I have a game capture source set up assuming that you already have a game capture and then we're going to put a mouse hand over the top and then what i'll do in a minute is show you how to do it in streamlabs obs with a bit more of a complicated setup but what we're going to do is add in the sources so you click the little plus sign on the bottom or right click add video capture device we're then going to create a new video capture device assuming you've not already got it in obs we'll call it face cam just for simply sissy sake and then select face cam from the list You'll see that is then working and is showing. So here we have it showing up. Now what we're going to do is just maximize it for now, just so I can demonstrate what it looks like. So fit to screen. So now you can see, obviously this isn't ideal because you can see desk here and the edges and also the cable. So you can see we have to move some things around to sort this out. That's not a problem because we can always move the cable out of the way in a minute and tidy things up a bit. What we're going to do now is we're going to right click and click to add a filter. You can do this by doing it directly on the thing itself. Down the bottom we have filters and then we want effect filter. From effect filter we then add a chroma key and we just click OK and we have that closed and now it's gone black. And that's black because that is now making the background visible and obviously we have a black background so now we can resize and reposition it if you hold alt and then click and drag on the corners you can then crop in your view so we can crop it in and we can get rid of everything except the mouse so i'll do it from the bottom so now you can see we have my mouse hand and a green glow around the outside of it and that's simply because of the lighting settings but you can also change some of the filters. So if we go into the chroma key, we can adjust the similarity levels. You can see if I tweak this ever so slightly, I've actually reduced the amount of the green glow that you're getting off of it. And you can change some of the settings within the camera hub software, which I'll show you in a minute, which will do that. But this is a basic way of how to set it up. We now have the chroma key set up in here. And you can see the mouse is now visible, but the mouse mat isn't. And I'll now show you how to do this in Streamlabs OBS. So now I'm using Streamlabs OBS. I'm going to add a video source of the Elgato face cam in and make sure that it's visible. Now you can see it here immediately. I've already applied a chroma key filter, but I'll show you in a second if you don't know how to do that. You'll see the keyboard and the mouse and you can't see any of the background. There is a little bit of a hint of green on the edges of my fingers that you can see adjusting some of the filter settings and the camera settings will help with this and i'll demonstrate how to do that in a minute to help but you can see a little bit of green hue around the very edges but what you're seeing is a much cleaner look than if you tried to pull in the camera view without a green screen and on the left hand side i am using my dslr to do a face cam capture so now if we right click and click onto filters we've got the chroma key set up here so that's how you do it you right click on your source you click on filters and then you go into this box and add a chroma key you can then adjust the sensitivity of it so if you find that you can see some green this is a way to tweak it to get rid of some of that and to focus more on your hand we'll go one way you'll end up with seeing a lot of the green screen and go the other way you'll see everything goes invisible but what i noted is that my hand was really bright despite not being under heavy lighting i then opened up elgato's camera hub software and adjusted the exposure by manually adjusting the compensation although it's set to automatic you'll then note that my then hand actually looks a lot more normal and the end result is i have a much better view of my hand and of the mouse without any desk and without any green screen glow on it you can then obviously adjust the zoom to get it the way you want it. You can crop it with an OBS or you can zoom it within this camera hub software. Cropping and changing the size within OBS is probably more effective because it has less of a negative impact on the degradation and the overall look and feel of it. And I'll show you some of the sample footage that I got now. It was captured in zero hour and I've been playing a bit of this. Check out my Parote Prawn Pews gameplay channel if you want to see some clips from that game because it's great fun. 
and I'm going to just give you a sample of what it looks like and what you could do with it. Obviously, my hand's quite large in this. You might not want to have your hand quite as big as that. For demonstration purposes, I just want to be able to show it and show how it might look and the effect that you'd get with these basic settings and this setup. Hopefully you found this useful. Let me know in the comments if you've got any questions. Thanks for watching. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> this has been the Provoke Prawn. Hope you found this video useful, interesting, hilarious, or otherwise. Take a look at these other videos that I think you might find interesting as well. And have a look at the description for links and other information you might find useful. Click that join button to see the benefits of being a member of my YouTube channel. And most importantly, have a great life.